First, assemble your materials. You're going to need paper towels. I recommend the nice cloth kind. They work great. A f cheap foam brush, as well as a cheap plastic card, gift card, something like that. You're going to use that to spread around your paint. So this is a acrylic. You can also use this screen print additive here that we have in the classroom. I recommend it. it gives out a nice, rich surface. And then we use polyurethane to protect our wood blocks. Not so much our linoleum though. Pictured is our sandpaper. You're gonna use a 220 sandpaper. It's got a very fine grit. Start by sanding down your wood block with the sandpaper. You'll notice here I'm going with the grain, not against it. There's not too much grain going on actually. It's a very smooth block. And then I just finish by sanding the sides. Just sand enough to get a smooth finish and once you're done, clean up any particles that are left on your table. The next step will be to prepare our blocks so that when we draw on them and then carve them, we can actually see what we're doing. So we use that acrylic paint and what we're going to do is put the acrylic paint on there, kind of like you're adding ketchup to a hot dog a couple times and essentially we're coloring the block so then what we draw and what we carve will be able to see exactly what we're doing so I take this plastic card and I'm gonna kind of scrape it around keep it tight to the board you notice how I start a little bit off the edge that way I don't get a ton of ink everywhere this is gonna mitigate a lot of the mess when I get to the bottom though, I do scrape it all the way off and that just allows for a nice full coverage and a clean look. Don't worry though, it doesn't have to be perfect. All it's doing is allowing you to see exactly what you're carving when you go to carve your block. Make sure you remove all the excess paint off your block by scraping as much as you can and then going in with your paper towel. So with the paper towel, you're going to buff away all of the thick areas. One, so you don't have any, any raised parts of the block and also because it's gonna help the drying time. It's gonna take about 10 to 20 minutes to dry. So remember the less you put on, the better. Preparation for a linoleum block is pretty much the same. Some people do like to sand their blocks beforehand just to get rid of any kind of surface damage. I noticed a few scratches on this block, so I just took my fine grit sandpaper again and gave it a quick sanding just to smooth it out. You don't have to go as intense as on the wood, but a few times will definitely help with any blemishes or scratches. Now you'll proceed the same way with coloring your block as you did with the wood. Now linoleum is less absorbent, so it'll actually be quicker to ink it and the color might look a little different, but again, this is just to help you see what you're doing. So remember when you're inking the block, start a little bit off the edge. That way you don't get too much ink on the sides. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually more about quickly laying down a flat color so you can see it, but not too much paint because again, it'll take longer to dry. So to help that, just buff it in with the paper towel and you'll be ready to go. If you're using just a regular acrylic paint, it won't have as much bold coverage as you see here, but it still works fine. Going back to the wood block, it should be dry by now. It sat for about 20 minutes. Now we're going to actually seal it with a polyurethane water-based coating. This is gonna allow for a couple things. One, when you're carving, you're actually gonna get cleaner cuts because of the coating applied. Two, it's not gonna absorb as much ink when you go to print. And three, it's gonna be actually easier to erase some of the things you've drawn because your marker actually won't bleed into the wood, it sits on top. So using a foam brush, it's a nice easy brush to use. You can just throw it away afterward or if you choose, wash it out. Um, then you're going to mix up your polyurethane just using a long palette knife. 
mix it up so that anything that fell to the bottom will actually get mixed back in and you'll have a proper material to use. Then of course clean whatever you use to mix it with. I used the long palette knife from the screen printing mixing area so I'm going to clean it really well and return it once I'm finished. Now I can safely just dip my foam core brush into the material and spread a thin layer over the entire block. Make sure it's thin and even. So a couple passes. Now thin is the best way to go. If you go too thick, it's going to take too long and you're going to get inconsistency. So a nice thin layer, smooth it out, let it dry, reapply for a second time, let it dry again. And then if you want to do any more than two coats, you're going to actually want to sand it a little bit with a very fine grit sandpaper and proceed. For this, I'm going to just do two coats, should be fine, and I can move on. Once I'm done, you're going to put all your materials back and throw away your newsprint. While my wood block is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start the process on my linoleum block. I don't need to seal the linoleum, that's only for wood, so once my red paint is dry, I can actually start drawing on top of it. So let's gather the drawing materials. So I'm going to get all my Posca pens, so I have this red for mistakes, white also for mistakes, and then all of my drawing utensils here. I like the Posca pens because they're both opaque and they last quite a while and also they draw really well on wood or linoleum materials. Some markers don't necessarily last very long like Sharpie so again I highly recommend trying any kind of paint pen, those work the best. Other materials you can gather would be your graphite pencil, if you don't have graphite paper, chalk. Here I do have my graphite transfer paper in which I'm going to take a drawing and actually transfer it to the block. So actually in this demonstration I'm going to show you drawing directly on the board so I'm not going to spend too much time actually demonstrating transferring because it's very similar to transferring a drawing to a normal sheet of paper. You will notice I'm going to leave a side uncut so I can tape it to the bottom of my linoleum block so it doesn't move anywhere. You could tape it to the bottom or you could tape it to your table. I tape it to the bottom in case you need to move the linoleum block or take it home so again it doesn't move. You'll notice the text here is actually right reading. You don't want that to be on your drawing. You actually want it to be backwards so make sure any text is backwards. So flipping, I'm just going to take some masking tape and tape it right to the back of the linoleum block. So again, if I have to leave or take this with me somewhere, the paper won't move and my drawing will line up. Then when you're ready to draw, tape your drawing down so it doesn't shift. I'm placing the graphite paper face down underneath my drawing. And I'll start to make the transfer just using a pencil or any kind of material. But again, make sure that drawing is flat against your material and proceed. So I'm just going to make a quick tracing just so you can see, but it works great. Now, say you don't have any graphite paper, you can just quickly use your pencil or graphite stick to make your graphite sheet just like so. And that could be your transfer. It takes a little bit longer but when you're in a pinch or you don't have any graphite paper this works beautifully. So I rarely transfer drawing. I just find that I'll plan out the sketch in my sketchbook and then I'll immediately start drawing it on the block. I just like that way of working but you find your own way of working. You can work digitally and then print it out and plan it on the wood block or you can just draw right on the block like I'm doing, however you like to do it. So I start out with like a red marker or chalk, gesture it out, and then move towards the pen and get some finished line work going. So this I'm just adding some detail. And even when I start carving, I usually add more drawing anyways. So I'm gonna actually show the process a little bit more in depth with the wood block here. So. 
Here's the block blank. I can gesture with chalk or actually draw with a red marker. So I'm gonna draw with the red marker and you can barely see it, but it allows me to be just nice and free with the drawing and not worry about erasing too much. This part of the process should only take about one to two minutes, depending on how large the drawing is. Then I'll go in and start refining what I've done with the black pen. So I'm gonna slow down here and start to get the more elegant line work going on, as well as deciding where I'm gonna carve and where I'm going to leave it. So I carve where the red is and I leave the black. So that's how I carve. So my line work needs to be spaced out enough that I'll be able to see what I'm doing, but also achieve the detail. So I messed up here, so while it's wet, I just hit it with the rag I can clean it with an isopropyl alcohol or just go over it with the red marker. So I'll continue working, adding my main shape, and then I'll work towards the detail. As I draw, I'm starting to think about depth and where I need to thicken or thin lines in order to be able to understand what's going on. I'm gonna add some black shape as well as polish out my line work so that it works for my carving style. You're gonna discover how you like to draw and how you like to carve. Please do that separately from what I'm doing here. I'm just showing you my process. I hope that you are gonna actually find your own way of doing this that works best for you. Now, as you can see here, I'm going in and thickening up my lines, adding detail and refining some of my line work. If you work in a lot of detail, I encourage you to think about shape and areas for the eye to rest. So make those black or make those white, but again, have shape to break up your imagery and introduce depth. I'm now starting to add text here. You'll notice I'm drawing it in backwards. So eights are easy, but my nine and my one had to be drawn backwards. Now I just made a mistake there, so I'm gonna let it dry. And then I'm gonna bring my red marker and just draw right on top of it to refine that one again. All I need to do is make a guide for what I carve because the true drawing is actually gonna happen with your chisel, not even in this process because the chisel could change things up. You can make a mistake or you could decide to change the drawing completely. All the real drawing again happens with a chisel. This is just a guide and you're gonna make mistakes along the way. So be prepared to make those mistakes and adapt your drawing for that. Once your drawing is at a state where you can start carving, then assemble your materials, including your chisel set, as well as what you're gonna be using to sharpen your chisels. That's gonna include the honing guide as well as the piece of chalk. You're gonna need both. Make sure you have some kind of broom and dustpan to clean up your shavings. And then this material. So this is a shelving liner I bought from Dollar Tree. It prevents your board or your linoleum block from slipping on the surface. It really helps for when you're carving. Then always have your Posca pens and drawing utensils handy for if you wanna add stuff or make any adjustments to the block while you're carving. These chisels to the right are my own chisels that I use. They're Swiss made files and they're really high quality. And the last thing you're gonna need is an X-Acto knife. So I'll be demonstrating carving a wood block. So this wood block is a Baltic birch. And again, you saw the drawing process. I'm gonna continue to add as I work as well but let's proceed. So this is the basic chisel set you've been asked to buy. It's a power grip. It's a decent set for the price. This first chisel here is a V gouge or a V parting tool. It's going to give you a lot of great detail and variety of your mark. It is a little bit harder to actually sharpen. The second tool is a U gouge. So this gives you a lot of clean marks. This is the knife, so you can actually use this to score your wood and carve it. This is a tool that allows you to clear a lot of your material. And then lastly, this also is a U-gouge, but it's more, it's smaller, so it yields more detail. Sharpening, we'll use the slip strop here that comes with a nice handy guide, as well as the honing 
tool and the chalk. So I'll show you how to use that, but this guide is really helpful, has some great diagrams for more explanation. These chisels I use actually rest right in your palm of your hand and allow you to push and have a little bit more control. So you'll see chisels like this as well as the power grips both work. It's just personal preference. So when you get started, make sure you're comfortable and that you have a decent height at which you're working so that you're not overexerting yourself. Then you're going to want to start with your detailed chisel and you want to start establishing the area right next to your line or the area that you don't want to print with your chisel. So I'm working right up against the line that I've drawn and I'm removing the material around it. I'm starting in detailed areas first and as well as anywhere next to a line. I could then use larger chisels to clear out the space inside the well I've created. At this stage, you should just be getting into a Zen mode of carving, taking your time, not rushing this process. When you rush, you tend to make more mistakes. You are going to make plenty of mistakes, especially when your tools start to get duller. They're going to start to skip more across the wood as opposed to carving. When it is time to sharpen, you're going to actually use this chalk and rub it all over the leather. So there's a flat leather part on the back of the slip strop that you have. Coat that in an entire layer of chalk. Your chalk is actually going to be your grit or right your sandpaper and that's going to do all the work. I'm sharpening a U-gouge right now, so I'm actually twirling the U-gouge from left to right to sharpen the bottom side at the right angle. So it's important that you get that angle right and you twirl it so it sharpens all consistency. And I run that the full length of the leather, so that's about 10 times I run it, allowing for a nice sharpening to happen that's not too labor intensive. This U-gouge takes a different sharpen than the V-gouge, so keep in mind each tool is different in terms of how it's sharpened. Once you sharpen the one side, then you need to hone the inside. So I'm actually going to coat whichever template works best, and then I'm going to run my U-gouge along that raised area on the front side. So once it's coated, then I'm going to pull my U-gouge right up against this middle one here, this small little mountain. I'm going to pull that definitely three to five times and you should be able to tell the difference. You should be able to feel the chisel gliding across the wood as opposed to maybe, you know, stopping and starting. Now, if you've dropped your chisel or dented it somehow, this sharpening process won't work. This is only really honing, right? Polishing the metal so that you get a nice sharp edge. So as I work, I encounter areas that I need to be really careful with. So I might instead pull in the knife or my X-Acto knife to create a solid edge by scoring it. So I'm using the knife and I'm actually cutting parts of the material. This will allow for a nice clean edge that the chisel will work right up against but won't cut it away. So it's a great way. So like say on these numbers here, I don't want to accidentally carve the, the number nine here. So I'm actually going to score the wood and then my chisel will work right up against it without cutting it away or making a mistake. So you see here, it's going to cut it. It actually cuts it really beautifully. A lot of people will do this to their entire plate. Now, you can do that. It just takes a lot longer, but I highly recommend it for like areas that you don't want to make a mistake on or detail. So I'm going to speed up the video here just so you can see the carving process in which I then clear out the main area. So this kind of pinky finger, I just do a lot of clearing out, which is one way to work. Then I get to the second finger here and I actually want to demonstrate a different way of working. So I want to work a little bit more detailed. I include some cross hatching. So here I'm actually having to really carve out very minute 
information. So I'm using a smaller chisel and working around the cross hatching. Here's a close up of the process so you can see some of the cutting happening. I'm using a detailed chisel, working around the line, taking my time. And again, if the woodcut is giving you a lot of pushback, it's probably your chisels need to be sharpened. So they should move smoothly across. Now keep in mind that there's two ways in which you're carving. You're either carving against the grain or with the grain. When you carve with the grain of the wood, it is gonna be a lot smoother. When you carve against the grain, you are going to feel each piece of grain, so you, it is going to appear more choppy. You'll notice I just made a mistake, so I had to kind of adapt the drawing, shorten the line a little bit. Again, that's going to happen, and that's normal. Embrace those mistakes. Here's another close-up of the sharpening process. Now, I will have a more extensive video on this, but you can see how I'll approach. So again, I'll cover the leather in the chalk. Again, this is your grit. This is what's gonna be doing all the work. You need the chalk in order to sharpen your chisel. This is a U chisel, so I'm just gonna rotate it from left to right in order to sharpen it consistently. You don't wanna just pull it and hit only one side, you actually want to hit the entire bottom chisel consistently. So again, that rotation is crucial. Pay close attention to the bottom and that angle. That's the precise angle in which you're going to want to glide your chisel against the surface. Turn it over and identify the right ramp or mountaintop you're going to need. Coat that in the chalk, that's what's going to be doing all the work, and then pull your chisel along that right ramp a couple times, three, even three, four, five times until it's sharp. You should be able to feel the difference when you go to carve against your line. If you find your material slipping, use the shelving liner. It works great. You just put your material on top of it. So as you can see, on top of it doesn't slip. Without it, definitely slips. This also works for your wood as well. Now big pieces of wood, you don't necessarily need to do this, but smaller pieces, definitely. Make sure to get the material that looks like this. It looks like a netting, it's a plastic, it works really well. Again, got it at Dollar Tree. Back to the block, I want to show you areas in which you can clean up. So say you had a lot of raised areas from the chisel and you're working and you want to clear some of that or it's printing and you don't want to see it printed, you're going to use this flat chisel here. Works really well. And it's great for just clearing out some of those raised areas of the wood like so. You don't want to use it to cut into the surface of the wood. You actually want to use it to clear out. So you notice here in this pinky finger, I'm just clearing out some of the raised wood. This is if you have areas that are inking that you don't want to ink and you need to flatten it out more. This all applies to your linoleum too. The only exception is your linoleum is going to carve a lot easier. So you'll notice a huge difference because of the softness of the material. So you won't have to sharpen as often. I won't bore you with any more of the process, but I do want to show you a finished block. This block's actually been rolled up in ink and I made it during a Zoom meeting. And lastly, and most importantly, make sure you clean up, including putting back all materials you've borrowed and taking the dustpan and broom and sweeping up all of your little clippings from your wood block.
Remember, leave it better than you found it.